Hi everyone, welcome back to BW Expert Talk Series and we are glad to welcome Ms. Rebecca Ching on the topic of divestment in industrial real estate. So amidst a very positive sentiment industrial real estate market, why are we having today's discussion about divestment and what are the key factors for a company to consider when doing divestment? Yes, I, I would say that investment and divestment are essentially two sides of the same coin. There are many reasons why the company is doing investments. Uh, I can bring up a couple. Either the assets is no longer aligned with the company business strategies, or the companies change ownership, and the new owner want to divest so that they can um, invest the new capital into other markets or other business line. Some developer they have a strategies to you know, divest their fully leased out property at premium so they can recycle the capital for new developments. In some other circumstances, you know, the asset is less under non-performing and the company doesn't have relevant resources to further develop it, mm -hmm. meaning the longer they hold it, the more loss they will incur. And in other case, the company experience financial difficulty, the difficulty to access capital for production servicing bank loans, as a result, they have to restructure their portfolio, divest them to meet the capital requirement. Right, that's very interesting. So that's the seller. How about the buyers? Who are the potential buyers? There are about a couple group of potential buyers uh, in this market. First, it would be an industrial real estate sub-developer who want to expand their market share. Second would be financial investors like PEs, insurance companies, pension funds. They would like to include industrial and logistic real estate into their portfolio because the asset would provide resilience and stable income when they are fully leased out. And the last group is uh, the end user sales, the usually manufacturing companies who would like to buy instead of leasing out the property for the internal use. So is there any checklist before any divestment? Every transaction will have a different angle to consider. However, it's important that the seller need to have an agent with extensive network of potential buyer. And even if it's more important that in order for the development process to happen smoothly, the seller need to prepare for it by considering the following key item. First, they need to make sure that the legal aspect of the assets are clean and clear. You know, it's very surprising to know that there are a lot of assets for sales don't even have a proper land URI certificate. Second, the seller need to separate on of the right and financial liability of an asset into a single standalone company because it's easier to divest the asset in such a structure than to sell an asset in a company you know, with a lot of business line and financial liabilities. And last of all is if the asset is in operation with tenants, mm -hmm. then the seller need to make sure, make sure that they have a ownership changing clause in their contracts. Right. Okay, and once the seller are taking care of all of the issues, basically they already reduce half of the negotiation time. Uh, so for let's say I'm an investor, I invest in industrial real estate market, and then now I realize that it's not easy at all. It's um, capital intensive, product development is not easy, and I want to divest when the market is still hot. So what kind of challenges that I may expect in order to have a successful transaction? By your now experience in screening and executing many transactions in this nature, we would like to share there are a couple of challenges. First, it depends on the experience and expertise of the seller. In many transactions, the seller has individual manufacturing company, speculator. They don't have a full knowledge of the market, experience of the asset transfer, or the legal process itself. So they lead to many limitations in determining the transaction value or the deal structures. Secondly, the consistency of the asset transfer. You know, seller not even aware that in certain circumstances, the buyer are required to sign a new lease agreement with the IP with a higher price right. instead of the existing leasing rate. And some of the property or the land zoning are not allowed for ready-built factory or warehouse development, which 
limit that the asset can only transfer to the manufacturing companies. Right. So with this condition, that will limit my half of the number of potential buyers. Mm -hmm. Thus, it's a time constraint. Sometimes the seller in need of the money right. fast. Right. All the assets in the bank is the public option held by the bank. Mm -hmm. So that leaves us the time to evaluate the assets or the deal execution very tight. Sometimes it's impossible to carry out. And the last one is pricing. Right. It's very important and it's so time consuming to for negotiation. But honestly, the experience to provide and to accept alternative option in payment or pricing conditions is very helpful because it helps to bridge the gap of price expectations. For example, the payment uh, schedule can be deferred a bit until a certain tax legal risk is significant mitigate. So I guess as a very experienced expert in the market, do you think that Pricing is the most critical factor above everything else, or is it not? I have to agree that price is definitely crucial, but uh, based on our experience dealing with many different sellers uh, of different backgrounds, there's something more important than pricing, is the willingness, the, how much effort the seller willing to make to get the transaction done, okay? From a non-experienced seller, they would not be able to understand the conditions or the concern from the buyers. And when they don't understand it, then they probably don't have a patient to address the concern. Well, but at BW, we, with our experience, we able to provide professional advice to our uh, sellers upfront. You know, like we are, we're going to present to them, here's a pro and a con of different deal structures. And we only negotiate key concern so that we can speed up the whole process. So it's actually important to have a balance between pricing and the mutual understanding between the sellers and buyers. So this wraps up our conversation today pretty well. Thanks a lot for joining. Thanks for having me. Thank you. And thanks everyone for turning in. We will inform you later on our next show. In the meantime, if you're having any questions, don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you again for watching and see you later. Bye-bye.